Hey guys and girls, my name's Dan. Welcome back to my very smoky forge in this episode of Trust Me, I'm a Blacksmith. Let's make a bottle key. Uh, this device, I don't know if you people know, is for um, opening a very important lock, and that's a lock on a bottle. Um, so, uh, I'm going to make this bottle opener. Uh, this is very similar to the bottle opener that I made for Penny. Uh, it's not exactly the same, but it is very similar. I'm going to go through in great detail how to make this bottle opener. Enjoy the video, and on the other end of this video, uh, find out how you can potentially get your hands on this bottle opener. This is also something that makes a great little project if, you're, uh, if you've got your Etsy site, or you're just doing craft fairs, or you're uh, trying to you know, persuade people to start purchasing your blacksmithing items. Um, it's very simple, doesn't involve punching holes, it's just basic forging with a bit of practice. It'll give you some excellent skills, this little job. Uh, yeah, so I definitely recommend this if you are getting into the craft and you want to start making a bit of mahula. So enjoy the video. Okay, what you're going to need to do is get yourself um, some stock to make this bottle opener. This is a piece of three quarter by five sixteenths, or it is uh, 20 by eight mil. I've marked off 100 mil. What we're going to do is we're going to draw this down to an eight mil round section or whatever, whatever looks nice. Uh, and then we're going to wrap it around, put the clip on, and make the handle. This is going to be a really simple, straightforward process. I'm going to talk you through everything. There is one thing I'm going to do that a lot of you aren't going to be able to do, especially if you've not got um, forges set up with loads of tools in. I am going to be using the fly press to put this little set down in. I want a really nice, tidy transition. Now, don't worry if you can't do this. You can do this by hand in your workshop. Uh, a couple of pieces of round bar across there, that'll do just the same job, make it look nice and tidy, or get yourself over the anvil and uh, try and work on those transitions. Now I'm being lazy and I'm just trying to get this done, but uh, that's what I would do if I didn't have a fly press. Okay, I'm just going to come up to, just going to come up to the centre dot mark, and I'm going to put the centre dot mark behind, oh sorry, well in front of these swages, and come down on three sides, rotate it through, and then one, two, three. Right, now I'll put a swell in there, I'm just going to forge that down. So I'm just going to take these again, I want to come down a little bit more, not much more, but I'm just going to work both sides, and again, bring those corners out. Get a nice transition is what I'm looking for. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just draw this down a little bit. So I'm just going to come over my Keep drawing this down. I'm using the rounded side of my hammer here. Just there. Uh, help get some of that material moved.
Okay, so I had to take a little bit of the length off this. It was getting a bit long um, and it was still quite fat. So I thought instead of um, struggling on, I will chop a bit off. I took about 50 mil or two inches off. Uh, and it's somewhere around eight or nine mil. Um, so I've still got quite a bit of material here. Uh, it's enough to make the bottom over with. And what I'm doing is I'm forging it to an octagon. And then once I've forged it to an octagon, I'll take the corners off the octagon and turn it into a 16 sided shape and then take the corners off that and turn it into a 32 sided shape and so on and so forth until it is round. Okay, so this is tapering ever so slightly towards the tapers from front to back. Um, that's okay, uh, I just want this to look nice and round and looking really tidy. So I'm gonna go one way, walk back into the bar, turn it the other way. And all I'm looking to do is just take each corner off I'm running down the length of the bar. This helps with twisting. It's getting a bit cold for forging now. Taking off some of these high spots, trying to get rid of some of these hammer marks. And also very gently forging at this redder temperature. This is sometimes referred to as plenishing. Okay, all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make the cross section of the round oval. And all I'm doing is just forging these faces down like so. Just want to keep everything looking reasonably straight. Now, you want to try and keep the whole the whole length even and as straight as possible. These little tiny taps are not forging, forging strikes. They are literally just to, um, just to get it all straight and tidy and make it look nice. Okay, right, the next step is to start making this round. Okay, so now we're gonna start turning this into a circle. Just gonna Feed this out over the bit like so. Just working that so gently. And also, something that needs to do is keep this. down on the anvil. Got that arrow for me again. Not using the uh, the bit to, as a former. I'm just using it to um, encourage the shape. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a ball-nosed punch. I'm going to just place it on the back here, just where the um, starts to come in line with the what will be the handle. 
and that's the clip there and I'm just going to have to get just behind it ever so slightly just to bring out a bit more material like so so just want to give this a bit of flavour so all I'm doing with these uh, scrolling pliers is just trying to bring that bit out there just so that it can look a little bit I know, a bit snazzy, that's all. I'm not trying, not trying to be crazy. And again, I'm just bringing this out just a little bit. All I, all I, I'm just trying to make it look a bit, uh, a bit exciting, that's all. I'm not trying to do anything special. Just gonna flatten that down a bit. Right, okay, so I've chopped off about three inches of the parent stock and I'm just going to uh, put a bit of an edge on it and I'm just going to put my maker's mark on it get my beautiful assistant to hold it for me. Just take my maker's mark. Ah, nice, good. And one more for luck. Lovely. Pop that back there, Luke. Just pop it back on there for me. Just gonna... Uh, Padding in there. Just take a wire brush, give it a bit of a clean, and just put a bit of a curve in the back of the bottle opener. Just uh, the other side in the fire and give that a brush. A bit of a brush as well. like so let that cool down a little bit and when it's uh, reasonably cool I'm going to uh, give it a crack with the old um, beeswax I'm just applying some beeswax with some turpentine in and this beeswax has been dyed so it's black you can use a clear beeswax or a linseed oil but with all of these um, finishes I would suggest applying them hot even if you're going to paint these I would suggest spray painting on not so hot that the paint sets on fire and again um, these polishes um, can set on fire as well if you put them on too hot okay hopefully you enjoyed that video it works really well. Um, I'm really very, very pleased with this one. <sighs> yes, it does definitely gain access to beers. Um, <laughs> so, um, I want to give this bottle opener away, but I want this bottle opener to do a bit of work for me. So if you're interested in getting your hands on this bottle opener, what you need to do is you need to go over to the video that I will leave in the link at the end and also in the description down below. You need to go on that video and say, hey Penny, didn't Dan make a nice bottle opener? Wouldn't mind getting my hands on one of those. If you do that, on that video, that video that Penny made, I will pick a winner from there and I will personally send you one of these bottle openers. Uh, but there is one more uh, clause that uh, has to go through. Um, I'm gonna make another bottle opener next week and I'm gonna have another YouTuber that I'm going to promote uh, with this bottle opener, uh, with, with, to win a bottle opener. Once that person has also been picked, the winner from that video has also been picked, um, then I will send out the two bottle openers. But 
you've got to do this one and the next one first. So potentially you could have the chance of winning two bottle openers, so uh, that might be pretty cool. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this very, very simple bottle opener with me. It doesn't take very many tools. You don't have to do all the jazz that I did at the bottom here, uh, but it, it does look very nice. It is very effective. And if you're selling these on your stall, your craft fair, or your Etsy site, I think these are quite nice and quite quirky. Ah, just before I go, I would also like to say, and um, technically I kind of pinched this idea off a guy called Maxwell Anderson. I will leave a link to his Instagram in the description below as well. I went to college with Max. He's a really good guy. Uh, and he's also a great blacksmith, so go and check his out, his Instagram out as well. Um, that's everything. Oh, also, check my Instagram out as well. Link in the description down below. So, uh, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, remember to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you are a subscriber, make sure you ring that bell for notifications. And uh, you might want to go to your settings because YouTube messes around with notifications all the time. And you might need to change some of your settings. Um, that is everything. Check your comments down below. Remember, go and check out Penny's video, uh, and um, which I will leave a, a link up for in just a second. And yeah, that's everything. So thank you for joining me. I'll leave a link up here to Penny's video. If you want the bottle opener? That's the one. Um, random video down here. That's a Patreon. Great way to support the channel. And this down here is uh, the subscribe button. So uh, see you later. Bye bye. Have time. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> now it's broken now. <laughs>